Green Lanterns are basically space cops who wear the most powerful weapon in the universe, a Green Lantern ring. Now, these lanterns are chosen to wield the ring based on two things. The first is whether they have the willpower to overcome great fear. And the second is how close they are to a Green Lantern when they die. Because when that Green Lantern dies, the ring flies off their finger to find a new Green Lantern. And this is exactly what happened with Hal Jordan. When Abin Sur crash landed on Earth, Hal Jordan was the closest person to him who also could overcome great fear. And thus, he got the ring. And for the most part, all the lanterns are noble warriors who defend others. However, it hasn't always worked out that way. On more than a few occasions, some very unlikely lanterns have emerged. People who should never have been allowed to wield a Green Lantern ring. And in truth, they only ever wield them for a short time before they're taken away. But still, the fact that they get them in the first place is rather amazing. And this video is going to go over the five most unlikely Green Lanterns who have ever existed. Number five, Lobo. In the Injustice universe, the deadly threat of Starro is threatening the planet of Oa and taking over the Green Lantern core, with the Starro mind control spores taking over some of the Guardians and quite a lot of the Green Lanterns. Which, from a strategic point of view, is actually quite clever, as Starro would then have an army of creatures who all have the most powerful weapon in the universe on their hands, which would definitely help with conquering the galaxy. And if you throw in the fact that Starro himself has become a Red Lantern, well, then you've got a truly unstoppable enemy on your hands. And so, desperate times call for desperate measures. And since the Green Lanterns are falling one by one to Starro and they're running out of soldiers, they have no choice but to recruit Lobo. He's only in the fight for money, of course, though when Atrocitus cuts him in half, it does kind of become personal. And it also shows that he needs more power in order to fight Starro and the Red Lanterns. And so the Green Lanterns make Lobo a deputy and give him a Green Lantern ring. And Lobo spends most of his time making deadly constructs in the shape of one very distinct part of the male anatomy. And though we don't see it too clearly on panel, for obvious reasons, it's still made very clear what phallic object Lobo is making, much to the dismay and amusement of the other lanterns around him. His use of the ring was short-lived, of course, as he was only deputized until Starro was stopped. And so once the danger has passed, he has to return the ring. Which is actually a shame because he was one of the more entertaining Green Lanterns. Number four, Lex Luthor. Now, Luthor famously wielded the Orange Ring of Avarice during the Blackest Night comic event, where he finally admitted that all he really wants is to just be Superman. But he has also wielded a Green Lantern ring in the much made fun of TV show Super Friends, although this series was actually called Challenge of the Super Friends. And in this episode, the Legion of Doom is getting rid of Superman, Wonder Woman, and Green Lantern as they feel that the League will be significantly weaker without them. Why they're only getting rid of three members and not all of them, I don't know. But anyway, they time travel back in time and disrupt their origin stories, obliterating them from the timeline. And when Hal Jordan is about to get pulled away by the Green Lantern energy to go to Abin Sur and get his ring, Lex Luthor switches places with him so he is called away instead. And he tricks Abin Sur into thinking that he is the one the Green Lantern ring is summoned. And so Abin Sur gives him the ring and Lex Luthor becomes Earth's Green Lantern. Now it does seem a bit odd that Abin Sur could be tricked like this and would just give away the most powerful weapon in the universe to whoever turns up. But we have to take into account the fact that he does respect the ring's ability to get a new champion and more importantly, he was bleeding to death at the time. So he probably didn't have his mind on the issue at hand that much. Of course, the rest of the League figures out what's happened and they travel back in time and stop all of the Doom members from doing this. And though that looks like Black Lightning stopping Lex Luthor there, it is in fact Black Falcon. And once of course he stops Luthor from getting the ring in the first place, he obviously no longer has the ring. It's a little confusing since it's time travel, but this was a short-lived event. Number 3. The Penguin Now while Lex Luthor and Lobo may be more evil, they're also more popular characters than the Penguin. And so then wielding these rings makes a bit more sense than Cobblepot having one especially since those two are more likely to be out in the universe than the Penguin is. After all, he's just a small, greedy, fat human, and in the grand scheme of the DC Universe, a very minor villain, which probably explains why he barely even taps into the power of the Green Lantern ring. Instead, he just uses it to rob a party and several ATMs by creating a giant hoover. This is a weapon that can destroy a planet and could easily have been used to rob Fort Knox. But instead, Penguin just steals some cash with it from the local Gotham City. 
And he doesn't even really go to a bank or two, he actually just goes to a party and some small thefts. I mean, the man really does lack imagination. Now he gets the ring when Green Lantern sends it to Batman for safekeeping. Find Batman. Safe with him. So that Sinestro doesn't get a hold of it. And basically the ring passes by the Penguin and he just grabs it and puts it on. It's a bit of a simple plot to be honest. And of course Penguin's crime spree with it is rather short lived. As eventually Sinestro turns up looking for it and he decides to give it to Batman rather than fight Sinestro himself. And so we get a very short fight, but a very cool image of Batman as Green Lantern as he fights Sinestro. And Penguin, of course, never gets a ring again, which, considering how limited his imagination with it was, is probably for the best. Number 2. Doomsday In the comic Doomsday Year One, Doomsday goes up against a host of characters from the DC Comics, including Darkseid, and he eventually ends up fighting the Green Lantern Corps. And after killing one member, he just picks up a Green Lantern ring and is able to use it to fly. Though sadly he doesn't actually get a Green Lantern uniform, which I personally found very disappointing because I would have quite liked to have seen him in this uniform. He eventually loses the ring when a Guardian of the Universe self-destructs and releases all of the energy built up in his body. And the resulting blast from this destroys the ring and blasts Doomsday off the planet and hurtling through space. Of course it doesn't kill him as Doomsday is essentially immortal, but it does get rid of the ring. It's quite a short fight as Doomsday has to fight a lot of others in this annual, so all of the fights only take place over a few panels. And to me the most amazing part of all this is the fact that he actually has the willpower and intelligence to wield the ring, as Doomsday is usually just a mindless brute in almost all of his stories. Number 1. Duck Dodgers Without question the most unlikely and the silliest of all Green Lanterns. Although in truth the episode is actually quite entertaining. In the show Daffy Duck stars as Duck Dodgers. And when Duck Dodgers goes to get his dry cleaning, he gets Hal Jordan's dry cleaning by mistake. And when he puts on the Green Lantern ring, he is transformed into a Green Lantern. And gains all of their amazing powers, including the ability to fly. It is a particular and rare honor to be the first of my species to receive the gift of flight. I shall not abuse this rare privilege too much. He is then called away to the planet Oa, which is under siege by Sinestro's horde of killer robots, who are kidnapping Green Lanterns. Once the attack is over and the robots leave with their prizes, Duck Dodgers joins up with the remaining Lanterns, and they are able to rescue the abducted Green Lanterns and defeat Sinestro. Of course, the real ring owner, Hal Jordan, eventually shows up and says that the two of them must have got their dry cleaning mixed up, and so Dodgers returns his ring to him. It was a short-lived but rather memorable story, much like the one where Bugs Bunny becomes Superman, and then is later revealed to actually be Batman. And one thing I do want to say is that in the LEGO Batman 3 game, Duck Dodgers actually features as a Green Lantern, and a lot of people may have been wondering, why exactly is Daffy Duck pretending to be a Green Lantern in this game? And this episode of Duck Dodgers is of course the reason, so it's actually quite a nice little easter egg for the fans who are aware of this. And that is the 5 most unlikely Green Lanterns that have ever existed. Do you agree with my list? Or do you think that there are even more unlikely Lanterns that have existed in the DC Universe that should have been mentioned instead? Be sure to let us know in the comments, along with the most unlikely character in media that you would like to see become a Green Lantern. Personally I quite like the idea of Jon Snow wielding the ring. Although I must admit, seeing Deadpool in the green suit would be quite entertaining as well, for several obvious reasons. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.